Hi, this is Cameron Curry with Kim Barm, and we're the vice chairs of the 2021 Dublin Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival. We would like to thank the Dublin Lawrence community and all of our sponsors, patrons, vendors, and civic organizations for their continued support of the Dublin Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival through the years. It's because of your financial support each year that allows us to celebrate our great city. Erin Gobra. Jones and this is Jeff Cannon and we are here today um, to talk about the St. Patrick's Festival. Um, I know that everyone is disappointed that we're not going to have the festival this year. No one is more disappointed I think than exactly. the committee um, but I, I think during this pandemic we're having to make decisions that might not be the most popular but we're doing it for the safety of our community so um, we're still going to be green and we're going to be right. uh, celebrating the luck of the Irish. Um, we have that every day here in Dublin right. Lawrence County but I um, am excited that Jeff and I are going to be here today to talk about uh, an event that is very dear to my heart and to Jeff's heart, and that's the Main Street Munchies. Um, this is uh, an event that's been loved by everyone um, you know, from its inception. And um, we're going to kind of turn the tables, and Jeff's just going to be the interviewer right. to interview me and just talk a little bit about the history of it and um, what it's meant to the festival and the community. So. Right. I'm going to pick it up from here because basically Kathy has been with this a lot longer than I've been. So, Kathy, give us an idea of about when it started and how, how it came about. Not that I'm older than you at all. No, not okay. at all. Okay, it's not that I'm older. Not okay. at all. <laughs> um, so, um, the Munchies was uh, the brainchild of Joan Killian, who was the first Main Street director here in Dublin in the early 90s. And um, I understand um, they were just wanting to, to have an event that would bring the community together and to bring people downtown. Um, as we all know, anytime um, you want to bring people to, a, uh, to an event, excuse me, to Dublin and downtown Dublin, um, you want to have an event. So the, I think that the food festival was something they, that they decided. Right. Um, and um, it was um, a pretty much a success from the beginning. There were probably 10 or so vendors initially. Um, and then Stacy Lee was the um, executive director of Main Street the next year, and she, um, you know, was in charge of it for that year, and it, it was about the same. And then when I took over in 1995, um, it was, you know, still doing well, and um, we sort of it grew from about 10 to 14 vendors, and then um, I think when we ended it, it was um, about 30 vendors. Wow! So um, it was. You know, I, I've always said the great thing about the Munchies was that it was um, organizations, churches, um, right. groups giving back to Dublin and Lawrence right. County. And I think that's what's so great about our festival anyway, is that everything we do is, is to give back to our community. So we had vendors, you know, uh, Boy Scout group, groups and Girl Scout troops and churches, and they would raise money and they would put it back in the community with whatever, right. you know, organization that they were um, affiliated with. That's, and that's the part I remember about it because uh, from the very beginning I remember it was not, you know, of course there were some, like when Domino's, there were people in Chick-fil-A got involved, but uh, most of them were like church groups and Boy Scout troops and um, and it was just great home food. Well, and that, you're right, like that's the cool thing about it was that it was um, restaurants and you know professionals who knew what they were doing, and uh, and Red Lobster always sold yeah, the most right. the most tickets because they had those little shrimp boats. Right. But then you had you know the churches that would do hamburgers on the grill, or you know sell cotton candy or popcorn, and you know they were or, or have a bake sale if you will. But you know everybody would come out in droves and they would support their you know their friends and families, and we would raise money and they would it would go to a good cause. Right. And um, you know it was it's it's a family fun event which has always been important to me because people felt like they could come and be with their children and bring them in their strollers and, right. you know, just have a, a fun evening. Eating, eating and music always go well together, you know. So. I, and that's where I remember my children. That's the part exactly I remember. My kids were small back in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, and I remember when bringing them down, and some of them were still in strollers when that was going on. So there was a break in it. I don't know if you want to talk about what happened because yeah. yeah. I do know that before we actually stopped doing it it was done 
at a time other than on a Saturday night. We yeah. tried some other things. Yeah, yeah. Initially, um, you know, in the olden days, as they say, you know, you would have the um, parade on Saturday. You'd have the, the Leprechaun Road Race, and then you'd have the parade, and then you'd go to Arts and Crafts, which was at Stubbs Park. Right. And it, you just wandered from those different venues, and you'd, you'd stay at the Arts and Crafts. And then after that, everybody would wander over back downtown. They would go to the Munchies. It right. was always from four to eight. And, um, you know, like I said, when it got to the, to the very last times that it was in, in our downtown area, we pretty much were from, you know, towns and funeral home to the courthouse. You know, all that was, right. was blocked off. And we, you know, another great thing is, you know, that's what I love about Dublin too, is that we partnered with the city and the county and the sheriff yeah. department and the police department and they were always so willing to do whatever they could to right. help help keep it safe you know we, we started fencing it off to protect everyone and you know all the different changes that we would have to make and the thoughts that we would have to make it a better and safer um, event they were always willing to do whatever they could to help us so right. it just made made it easier for us and um, you know, I can remember people calling me in September. You know, when when is the munchies? You know, when can I sign up yes. for the munchies? I mean, it was just it was the cool exactly. thing to do. You know, and um, it was just it was exciting and it was a lot of fun. Um, but um, when it ended, it was in I think it was 2011. And um, so um, I can't. I think we maybe took a year break, and then the festival decided, why don't we do it somewhere else? So we decided to do um, Dine in the Pines. Right. And that's when we went to Stubbs Park. Right. So um, that was, you know, it was a neat experience because it was something different. Um, we've always had the Rocky Creek Band. has sort of mm -hmm. been the, the band that has really been our, our um, music, musical partner. Um, and they're wonderful too because they play all different genres. They can play, you know, rock, they can play country, they can play oldies, and it just appealed to all ages. Right. So um, we went to the um, to, uh, uh, Southern Pines and had it there, and um, we had Rocky Creek Band again, and we had some, we had a lot less vendors, but um, I think those that went, they did well, because it was, you know, less people, right. you know, too. It was, just, it, was, it was a growing year. Right. So um, we did that for a couple of years, and then um, it was decided that we would bring it back downtown. Right. So. Um, it was when actually, that's when I got involved with it, because we had taken a break, I think, after Dining the Pines for a couple mm -hmm. of years, and, um, at a past chair's luncheon. It was the year Will Curry was chairman. And I remember talking to Will. He, it was his incoming year, and I asked him, I said, what about the munchies? Why don't we try to bring it back? Well, of course, he looked to me and he said, there you go, there's you something to do. And I'm like, okay, one thing we will do, I will call Kathy Jones. If she's willing to do this, I will be her man Friday. But well, I you've will been not. more than a man Friday, well, but well, I was but, so honored that you had reached out to me because I, you know, it, it's just, a, it's a love of mine and it's just been something that I was so glad to hear that we wanted to bring it back. And right. um, people did always ask me, when are y'all gonna bring back the munchies? When are you gonna bring back the munchies? Cause right. it was something they really enjoyed, so. And um, we actually, when we went to Stubbs Park, we actually partnered with the first year with, what was it, well, Dublin? Dublin, or? visit Dublin, Georgia. Visit or, Dublin, yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a short break and we'll come back and talk about um, how it's it's changed when we moved to Subs Park. Right. I'm Heath Richter, and uh, we just uh, want to invite everybody to come on down to uh, the Houston Clinic and check us out at our new facility. Uh, we've been in Dublin for a while now, obviously, but uh, have, uh, have a new office here, and we'd just like you to come down and see some of the new stuff we're offering. And uh, if you need to get checked out, we'd be glad to do that for you. We've got uh, able to do some ultrasound-guided injections now and um, physical therapy and just a little bit better space, so hopefully we can get you in and out of here a little bit quicker. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic, Medical Drive in Dublin. Good morning, folks. I'm John Nichols. I'm general manager at the uh, newly built uh, Bug House Pest Control Office here in Centerville, Georgia on Houston Lake Road, uh, where we've had a number of people, uh, companies that have been involved in trying to get this uh, building up and, and come in this office uh, ready. And, and one of those is A-plus flooring. Uh, and construction, uh, Kyle Gerard, uh, really had a major play in everything that happened with this building to get it to where it is today. Very, very pleased with his work and his uh, uh, his professionalism and 
and number one, talking and, and making sure things are done right, but also uh, as far as examples and uh, 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 flooring and, and colors and stuff like that, really made a major difference as far as getting the building built. Uh, very thankful with, uh, with how it went about and how Kyle was very helpful, answered all the questions that he could. Um, and, and if he couldn't, then he got back with me and was very um, timely in making sure that that happened. But I just want to give a shout out to A-plus flooring and construction and tell Kyle, we appreciate you. You did a fantastic job. We're very thankful for our new building. Kathy, tell us a little bit about, you know, in the earlier days when you started trying to select vendors or people were calling and wanting to be vendors, you know, I, we talked about what kinds it were, but what what all went into that? Yeah, and you know, again, it was, um, we, I guess I would say initially we didn't want, um, you know, like a restaurant from out of town or something. We wanted it to be just local people because again, I think that's what's so great about our festival is that we're promoting right. local, local businesses, local venues, and we're wanting to make sure that everything stays here in Lawrence County. So um, we would have, you know, and, and the best ones were, you know, the, the church groups that, you know, they sold baked goods or we had, you know, somebody that would cook sausages on the grill and you'd smell that, you know, the grill and, right. and all that. And, um, you know, they were raising money for some event that they were going to do or, or some organization they were going to give back to. So that really made it, you know, feel like we're part of the community. And then the restaurants became interested, which was great. And it was a great promotion for restaurants, you know, like remember when Chick-fil-A came here, of course, they need no help with advertising, but it still got their name out right. there. And, you know, the, the um, philosophy initially was to do tasting samples. So like, like Chick-fil-A did a small chicken sandwich rather than like the regular size chicken right. sandwich. Or you might do, um, you know, a little hot dog, you know, rather than a big, you know, big one, but you, you were doing things so they could go from different booths. I'm going to get a hot dog here. I'm going to get a hamburger there. I'm going to get a sausage dog there or whatever. And so the, we asked them to make them um, in sizes that were like a sample size. Um, and then, you know, like Red Lobster, when they would do it, they might do like three or four shrimp, you know, at a time or whatever, right. just so you could go to different, because we want everybody to go and taste everybody's, you know, things. But as the years progressed, that kind of changed a little bit, and mm -hmm. people were making regular size items, which was fine. Um, and then we would have a church group. We, we would say that a youth group would be responsible for the Coke sales. Mm -hmm. And so the booths themselves could sell water and lemonade and tea, but only the church group could sell the Cokes. Right. And that way they would get the fundraising, you know, from that to use yes. with whatever they want to do. So I think that made it, again, it's just all about, you know, the, the family. Um, and so you remember, know, cause I remember the Coke uh, trailer was always like right in the middle. Yeah, it, it exactly, okay exactly. Um, and um, then as, you know, our downtown began to grow, um, you know, when Dino's came to, to our downtown, um, you know, they, they developed some notoriety pretty quickly um, statewide with being the best pizza right. in Georgia and that kind of thing. And so, you know, it was obviously a way for them to advertise as well. And, and that type of restaurant that was downtown, you know, they could just set up a booth right in front of their restaurant, a table or whatever. Right. Or, you know, we, we even would have like a business. I remember there was a, a, a loan company that would sell, they just, you know, set up a a, a grill and made hamburgers and they raised money for whatever so right. you know again it's just a way for them to to sort of advertise or like we had catering companies that would you know come and, and they would sell their products because they're getting their name out there and you know mm -hmm. when you when you give them their sample then you give them a business card you know and call me if you need any help or whatever right. so it was just a great way for them to advertise and um you know it's as i always have said food and family and music go That's together right. well and so and it's outside you know do you know it never rained no, any time we did the munchies i mean it was just crazy but there might be rain before or after but it was you know always um a beautiful weather you know right. and it might be cold you never know i can remember when i was pregnant with mary lawless and i think i i had the munchies that saturday and she was born like the next tuesday oh, wow. and i was <laughs> waddling down main street you know but I, it was just so much fun i right. mean it just you know you're exhausted at the end of the day and you're you're worn out but it's just so much fun it was just a great a great way to to sort of end that super saturday right. you know and you are and what you said about families was true there were you know, everybody from grandma and granddad till 
little ones in strollers, like several generations were down. It was just a great time to get together. And it was always a, even with my kids, when they got older, they made sure when they came home from college or even after they got married and all, was what weekend is the munchies. <laughs> That's when we'll come home. That makes you feel good to hear right. that. And yeah, it's, it's sort of like, sometimes people say, well, there's too much to do on Super Saturday. And I said, no, because you're right. The families that come home, it's like a homecoming. You know, and you know, Dublin, we're so blessed to have such a wonderful community that, that works well together with the city and the county and all the organizations. And the festival is such a, an homage to, to what can happen. And you know, just hearing everyone be upset that we're not able to have it this year. Right. You know, as, as how many years has it been? Is it 55? I mean, it's just crazy that, that, yes. that a festival can last that long and it still be so beloved by, by everybody. And, and totally run by volunteers. Yeah. Oh, none of us get paid, right. you know, none of us. And that's what I was talking to somebody, you know, and, and we had to make that decision in August, you know, and yeah. because you, we start planning in August, you right. know, that's when we start. And it takes a long time to plan all those activities and um, events. And it's just, um, I just, I think when we get to do it next year, it's gonna be. Oh yeah. Well, that's like, I went to choir practice last night for the first time and I was very emotional, you know, because it's like, I haven't been in choir for a year. I think everybody's feeling that way about you right, know, we're, things we're, that they haven't been able to do. We're within a week or two weeks of when it all shut down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're exactly right. Right. So it's, um, but, it, but it really is very inclusive to anybody that wants to be involved because I don't know if you remember one year, we had the Student Advisory Council here at the bank. Oh, yeah. Their project was to raise money. I don't remember what the money was raised for, but I'm pretty sure they sold chili dogs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we grilled hot dogs and... So they were involved in it. So they thought that was a great idea and it turned out to be a great fundraiser. <clears throat> and also, you know, like um, we would have downtown banks that would offer to assist us, you know, with, with handling of the money or whatever. You know, just everybody just partnered and said, what can we do to help? Because they knew that, you know, the main thing is to keep it safe and keep everybody, you know, enjoying the event, but also everybody just partnering together and coming together and just making it be a huge success. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that's what it was. And um, you know, we we talked about getting a bigger name band or somebody, you know, like a, a famous thing. But it's sort of like that's that's what was neat about it was the local flair, right. you know, and um, just being able to recognize people that you that you that you know from around town. Right. And um, I was looking at some old pictures a couple of weeks ago, and it's amazing that it's been going on as long as it has, you know. So. And the downtown area now, it was back when we. I can remember the time because. Everybody in Lawrence County knows Dub downtown Dublin is does not resemble what it did 20 years ago. Oh, I know for sure. So it's it, you know hopefully that the fe you know the festival and the munchies was one of those things that catapulted like maybe helped people well, yeah. realize downtown needs to be vital. Well, good point. And you know we would we would encourage the the merchants when we had the munchies to to be open and maybe have a sale going on or something. Right. And I know it could be a little bit of a challenge because you know the streets are blocked off, but but you think about all those I mean I think at its peak we had over 3500 people that were coming to the munchies. So right. that's a lot of people that could be in your stores purchasing your items, looking at things. So it's an opportunity for you to market, you know, right. whatever you're having to sell. So Exactly. We'll, we'll take another break now and we'll be back and give some more history about the munchies. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. Dr. Collins Quartang in the City of Hope Heart Vascular Center reminds you that February is Heart Health Month. Did you know that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women in the United States? There's no need to put off an examination. Cardiovascular disease kills more women than cancer. One woman dies every 80 seconds in the United States due to cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease can affect women of any age. Dr. K specializes in internal medicine, echocardiography, nuclear cardiology, general adult cardiology, and interventional cardiology. 
Other areas of expertise include acute and chronic heart attack management, peripheral interventions to save legs from being amputated, heart rhythm abnormalities like atrial fibrillation. At City of Hope Heart and Vascular Center, we do your heart right. Call for an appointment today at 478-353-1970. Accepting new patients and walk-ins. Relax Dublin, Dr. K and City of Hope has you covered. Okay, we're back. Um, and we were, I don't remember how many years we did not hold it. I mean, four or five years maybe that mm -hmm. because of various reasons. And I think a lot of it when it was dying in the pines, it was still a really great, great event. But I think a lot of people miss downtown. They miss being part of that day because it was on Super Saturday, still on Super Saturday. And it was just kind of, I guess being out there it was isolated. Well, and we, we thought about, you know, we did it in conjunction with like a car show that right. the rec department was doing and right. that kind of thing. And it's nice to have different venues and opportunities for people right. to showcase our community. But um, I think you're right, Jeff, the sort of the, the feel of the munchies is it's, it's down here, it's downtown and it's where, you know, everything else is going on with the parade and the, right. the, the road race and then the arts and crafts moved to the farmer's market. Right and that's become a really big venue and so it just was logical that it kind of followed its way back downtown. So. That was one of those things I remember Robin Flanders I think was chairman the year they moved arts and crafts to the market and I was one of those that didn't like the idea. I like arts and crafts in the park. Well, I We're kind of old school aren't we? I had to admit to her I said this works really well. It worked very well the way the layout was which of course then opened the park up for Shamrock mm -hmm. that Visit Dublin did and then as soon as the idea came back to um, try to revitalize the munchies and you said yes we were back. Well so. I think too it's like like we said Shamrock was was going to be a rock concert you know, have, have a band right. and it was going to be outside so you again you've got food and music and it all works so right. um, Rebecca McWilliams was you know gracious enough to let us partner with them right. and um, you know, Subs Park was in a little bit of a revitalization as right. well um, with all the renovations that they made and it just kind of made sense. And, um, and I was so excited to get to work with you. It was so exciting <laughs> for us to be together and, you know, to, to try to bring it back. And, um, you know, it's funny, you, I think we maybe had seven vendors that year. I think there were year. seven, yes. Yeah. But again, sometimes when you have a smaller amount of, of vendors, they do really well because, you know, right. people were excited about it. We tried to get the word out that Munchies was coming back and um, so people really came and they supported the vendors um, and it was just, you know, it was, it was just a fun night and um, it was cold and yes. we're, in that, we're in those booths trying mm. to sell those Cokes and whew. And, but, I can, and I can remember Kathy and I talked about should we just like try to get as many vendors as possible but remember we talked about the last thing you wanted to do was not have the crowd to support right. them and then that they, would, they wouldn't want to do it again. So. And I, I do think we realized that first year was going to be kind of a growing year. Right. And um, you wanted those people to be successful who came. And it was perfect. And right. I remember a lot of people sold out. Right. And um, they wanted more. And they, you know, they said, where are the rest of the vendors? And we're like, well, they'll be here next year, you know. Um, and then the way we had it structured, the, the band was at, down near the um, uh, stage area right. at Stubbs. So if you didn't want to, you know, be near the music, you could come up this way. If you wanted to go hear the music, you'd go back right. there. And um, it just, it lended itself to just a nice evening and, and just you could just kind of well. wander around. And it was fun to to have something back at the park. Right. You know, so I it, can remember, arts. I can remember Helen Harper driving around in her golf cart, you know, <laughs> around <laughs> Stubbs and all those fencings that were there. And, you know, you would just leave straight from the parade and go over to the arts and crafts. So I think you're right, people really missed having something at Stubbs Park, you know? And I think, it, you know, and I guess we are old and, sit, and set in our ways, but it was like, that was Super Saturday. Right. And the Munchies were, was part of it. Right, right, so, exactly. But, so we did get a, good, a great response, I thought, and then I guess we held it one more year or mm -hmm. two more years yeah, before. one more year. And the next year. year was even bigger and better. Right. And um, it was, I can't remember how many ven ven vendors we had, but it was, you know, people were right. very interested and it's, um, it did really well, and we were hoping, you know, for a great year last year. Right. Um, and then, you know, 
this junk happened and right. it, it just kind of changed everything. But um, And we've talked about different things for the future. You know, you may see the munchies morph into something else because we've just, you know, thought about, you know, there's lots of options as long as we feel like you stay in yeah, the downtown cause, cause area. Yeah, because, you know, we talked about extending it onto Jefferson. You know, right. there, there's so many new restaurants. You know, you've got right. Saltwater and, and, you know, um, your pie and all the other ones, the, the yeah. staples that are there, and you could expand it that way, or or you could continue doing it at Stubbs and right. just making it bigger and better, right. and I think that's an option as well. Yeah. Um, and then we talked about the market. You right. know, they just all, there are all kinds of opportunities, so. Um, I think as long as you keep food involved, people will come. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so we um, hope everybody will, will think about it for next year, and, and your organizations and churches that um, would want to participate, you know, could, um, could be a part of it, and um, it's a, just a great fundraiser, but it's also a great way to um, to be a part of, of this wonderful right. festival. So, right, exactly. Yeah. So. Well, Jeff, it was so great to be with it you today. It was great to talk to you too. We, this was fun. Well, Makes that, me want to have the munchies. That's right. So, we'll just have our own munchies. <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. Hi. Thank you all so much for joining yeah. us today. We appreciate it, and um, we hope to see you soon.